Caffeine, the socially acceptable addiction. You know that person who says, don't talk to me before my coffee? They're not quirky. They're literally describing withdrawal symptoms and everyone just laughs. Caffeine blocks adenosine receptors in your brain. Adenosine makes you tired, block it, and you feel awake. But your brain creates more receptors. Now you need caffeine just to feel normal. You're not drinking coffee for energy. You're drinking it not to feel terrible. That's dependency with a cute name on mugs. The crash? That's your brain flooding with adenosine. Then you need another cup, a cycle costing you money, sleep quality, and natural energy. How socially acceptable is this? Completely. Does that make it not an addiction? Absolutely not. Alcohol. Borrowing happiness from tomorrow. Everyone knows someone who needs to drink to relax, like the brain forgot how to process stress without chemical assistance. That's exactly what's happening. Alcohol is a depressant. It slows your central nervous system and makes everything feel temporarily better. Keyword, temporarily. You're pausing your brain's ability to care about problems. The trade. You get a few hours of feeling loose, then disrupted sleep, dehydration, next day anxiety, and if you do it regularly, your brain rewires it to need alcohol for feel-good chemicals. People call it a social lubricant, like that makes it harmless. Your liver and neurons are taking damage while you're enjoying the vibe. How normalized is this? Extremely. Every celebration, bad day, social event. Does it make it safe? Your future self would say no. Sugar. The legal high nobody calls a problem. You've seen people crash after a sugar high. Kids bouncing off walls. Then, exhausted. Adults riding the blood sugar roller coaster wondering why they can't focus. Sugar hits your brain like a drug. It activates the same reward pathways as seriously problematic substances. Your brain releases dopamine. You feel good, you want more. That's craving, not hunger. Your body spikes insulin. Blood sugar crashes. You feel tired, irritable, foggy. So you reach for more sugar. You're destroying your metabolic health while food companies profit. The average person consumes their body weight in sugar yearly. Nobody calls it an epidemic because it's in everything, but your pancreas is working overtime. How addictive is sugar? More addictive than certain illegal substances. Does anyone care? Not enough to stop putting it everywhere. Nicotine, the five minute relief that costs everything. There is always that person stepping outside every hour for a smoke break. They say it helps them think, relax, focus. What it does? creates a problem so it can temporarily solve it. Nicotine is one of the most addictive substances on the planet. It hits your brain in seconds, triggers dopamine, and your brain wants more. Within hours, you're in withdrawal. You're not smoking for pleasure. You're smoking to stop feeling awful. Non-smokers don't need nicotine to relax. Your baseline is withdrawal. The cost? Your cardiovascular system, lungs, life expectancy. But sure, Keep telling yourself it helps you focus. How hard is quitting? Harder than most admit. You're fighting cravings, habits, triggers, and an identity built around needing fixes. Explicit content. The free drug rewiring your reward system. You know someone who jokes about their late night browsing habits? Like it's funny that they're regularly hijacking their dopamine system with supernormal stimuli their brain wasn't designed to handle. Here's what the research shows. Explicit digital content provides infinite novelty and constant gratification. Your brain releases massive dopamine hits for zero effort. Click, dopamine. Click, dopamine. Your reward system learns that pleasure requires no work, no connection, no reality. Regular consumption can alter brain structure. Research indicates decreased gray matter in the reward processing areas. Users need more extreme content to get the same response. That's tolerance. Same as any other substance. The impact? Unrealistic expectations about relationships, difficulty with real intimacy, decreased motivation, and other documented physical effects. You're training your brain to respond to screens instead of real human connection. How normalized is this? Completely. It's free, private, and widely accessible. Does that mean it's harmless? Neuroscience research suggests otherwise. 
Social media, the dopamine slot machine. You know that person who can't sit through a meal without checking their phone? They're chemically hooked on variable rewards and don't realize it. Every notification, like, comment is dopamine. Your brain doesn't know the difference. You're pulling a slot machine lever every refresh. Tech companies hired neuroscientists to make apps addictive. Infinite scroll, red badges, streaks. It's engineered to keep you coming back. The cost? Destroyed attention span, disrupted sleep, self-esteem based on strangers' approval, anxiety when you can't check it. How many hours daily do you scroll? Multiply by 365. You just lost weeks to algorithmic manipulation. Prescription medications. Doctor approved dependency. Some people need psychiatric medication. That's valid. But there's also a massive population taking pills because it's easier than addressing root causes. Antidepressants. Anti-anxiety meds. ADHD medications alter brain chemistry. Sometimes that's life-saving. Sometimes it's masking symptoms. And getting them off can be harder than getting on because your brain adapted. Nobody talks about withdrawal difficulty. Your brain chemistry was altered and needs recalibration, but doctors sometimes prescribe like candy. This isn't anti-medication. This is pro-informed consent, pro-understanding of what you're taking, pro-asking questions. How normalized is daily medication? Very. That's fine when necessary, but how often is necessary versus convenient? Processed food, engineered to make you eat more. You've met people who can't stop eating certain snacks. They're not weak-willed. They're up against food scientists who engineered irresistibility. Processed food hits your bliss point. The perfect combination of salt, sugar, fat, and texture that makes your brain light up. You're eating for a chemical reward, not nutrition. Your brain can't distinguish between satisfied and this tastes amazing, keep going. When food overrides natural satiety signals, you eat past fullness. Crave it later. Feel terrible, but keep coming back. The result? Obesity, metabolic disease, brain fog, energy crashes. But it's cheap, convenient, and everywhere. How much of your diet is processed? Every bite is optimized to make you want more while providing minimal nutrition. The uncomfortable truth. Here's what nobody wants to hear. Almost everyone is chemically dependent on something you judge people for their substances while consuming your own because yours is legal or socially acceptable. Caffeine, sugar, social media, explicit content, processed food, alcohol on weekends. You're altering your brain chemistry daily and calling it normal life. You're riding dopamine cycles, experiencing withdrawal, chasing the next hit. Your brain doesn't care about reality. It cares about neurochemistry. Right now, it's being hijacked by multiple sources that figured out how you keep coming back. If this made you uncomfortable, good, you can fix what you won't acknowledge. Most people will recognize themselves in multiple sections and change nothing. They'll keep their morning coffee, evening scrolls, weekend drinks, processed lunches, and prescription bottles. Then judge somebody else. Don't be most people. Be honest about what you're dependent on. Not what you enjoy occasionally, what you need to function, what you experience withdrawal from, what you organize your day around. Now if this video made you question your relationship with anything you consume, hit that like button. This information needs to reach people sleepwalking through dependency. Subscribe for more uncomfortable truths that challenge what you've been told is fine or normal. And comment which substance you're most dependent on, because accountability is the difference between awareness and change. Most people know they have a problem. Very few will do anything about it. The substances that control your mind aren't always illegal. Sometimes they're just socially acceptable.